Hello and welcome to the first of two videos, this one covering the Mac of looking at the installation of our simple Floppy Robin project under Eclipse so we can actually get it running on Android devices. So to do this we need to go first of all, well the first assumption I'm making obviously is you've got Cocos 2D X somewhere on your hard drive already sitting there ready to be used. Um, otherwise the video so far will have been probably a little bit difficult. Um, you need to go to developer.android.com forward slash, forward slash SDK then index.html and here is a bundle already provided by Google with all of the stuff that you need to develop. So there's actually very little setup required and um, despite this process being the subject of lots and lots of online questions and problems the process you'll see is really really simple to get your project actually running. Um, the first one is just to download this bundle, it's a zip file, and extract it somewhere. Once you've done that, you need to go to the Android, this address here for the Android NDK, the Native Development Kit for C++ um, on Android, and I downloaded for the Mac here, this one here, and again, just extract that somewhere on your hard drive so that you know where it is. So what you should end up with is I've made a separate new folder for all of this so that I'm doing it effectively from scratch live as well. So if it doesn't work, then uh, I'll be having the same issues as everybody else. But here's the bundle already extracted and we've got the clips here and this is the app we'll be starting, but not yet. And we've got the SDK here. Then I've got the inside, so documents, Eclipse and Android NDK is where I've got the Android NDK installed or extracted and this is known here this as the root of the Android NDK that will be important later on. And last but not least there's good old Cocos 2DX uh, in its root folder here. So the root folder is the folder that contains all of these folders inside here. That's also important for later. Going back to the Android Development Tools bundle here Inside the SDK and platform tools, there's something called ADB. And this path that leads to your platform tools, you need to add to your path variable. It's really important that. And to make sure you've done that correctly, if you bring up a terminal and type ADB, you should see a load of text like this and not an error saying it can't find the, the command. And if you plug an Android device in and type ADB devices, then you should see the serial number of the device that's, well not serial number, sorry, um, address I think of the device that's attached. Um, you could go further with that and just type um, Android logcat dash v and time for instance and that should give us then all the current logs from the Android debug bridge with also the timestamp there for instance. So make sure please that you've added that correctly to the path variable otherwise we're going to have a bit of a difficult time installing the application on the device because we're going to do that via the console because we're going to be installing what are called signed applications and you'll have some difficulty doing that anyway. Okay, so now that that's done and ADB should be configured, uh, well the path should be configured and working we need to think about how we do the setup on Eclipse. Inside the simple Floppy Robin project, we have our Android project here. All our classes, remember, are inside here. And we have our Android project here. And there are a couple of really useful files. One is the README, which I don't think many people read, because that's what contains the step-by-step -step instructions to get the project imported and working. But just before we go in there, inside JNI, there's an android.mk. If you open up the android.mk, I'll just bring over text editor here where I've opened it, you'll see this line local source files. Your version will have main.cpp and hello world scene. You need to add in here the other source files for the project, not the header files, just the cpp source files in the format that I've added them in here. I've already put them in so you don't have to sit through me typing them. And then save the file. And that's the only thing you need to do there. If I now switch to the readme, and that's remember the readme that you find inside the proj.android, we have all the steps inside there now to enable us to set and get the project running on Eclipse. So just to show you that, here 
is the setup eclipse environment brackets only once and that's what we're going to be doing now so I'm just going to move this away and start the eclipse.app and open and there will be a few seconds of sitting here in this video particularly when it builds the project for the first time but um, right so I'm going to change the workspace here so I'm not going to go in my normal workspace and in fact I'll just go to the desktop and the tutorial folder and save the workspace there I apologize already in this video if I have to put some annotations over to hide certain um, sort of private things that pop up for directories and things. I'm sure you can understand that being done. Okay, so we have Eclipse now opened up, or ADT, Android Development Tools. And now we can get on with setting things up for running our project. So if we follow the instructions here step by step, the first thing we need to do is set up a path variable, Cocos2DX. So we're going to copy that, and it says to go to Eclipse Preferences, General Works, General Workspace, and Linked Resources. Click New to add a path variable pointing to the root Cocos2DX directory. So if I just move that away and I can still see it, we go here, Preferences then, General, Workspace, and then Linked Resources, and in here we just click New, name this Cocos2DX, and the location then is going to be the directory, the root directory of cocos 2dx and that root directory then is the directory which contains just to remind you in the cocos 2dx folder here these folders here okay so in my case it's users test and lemon uh, documents cocos 2d and then cocos 2dx 2.2.1 that is the the root so I've already got that prepared surprisingly enough for me press OK and that value is now stored in so bringing back the readme file, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up NDK root, which is the root of the native development kit. So we need to go to preferences, C++ build, environment, add, and add in NDK root. So I'm going to go to C++, uh, build, environment, add, I'm going to add NDK root, and the value here is the root of where the Android NDK is located and just off screen from you so I don't take up too much space I'm just getting that uh, that value now if you drag and drop directories into the terminal then you can get a text representation of the directory so there we go so I've gone test and lemon documents eclipse Android NDK so when you've downloaded and unzipped your root will look something like this although your the other folders here obviously will be different and that's called NDK root so now we've done that we just have to click apply and now everything is actually set up already believe it or not now it says import the file so we import the project libcocos2dx so we go file new project android project from existing code browse to cocos2dx platform android java and finish adding the project and then to add our project, we do exactly the same thing, browsing to the project.android, and that is all we need to do. So inside the Package Explorer then, I'm going to right-click and New and Project, and go to Android and Project from Existing Code, and now click Browse, and I'll just go into some shortcuts I've got here, if they actually load up for me, and they don't, fantastic. So I need to find Cocos2DX then, and Cocos2DX, and then Platform, and then Android, click Open, leave everything else unchecked as it is, and click Finish. And our lib Cocos2DX, Cocos2DX has landed then with Android 4.4 there inside the Package Explorer. So we'll right click again and go New, and then Project, and we'll say project from existing code and now what we want to do is browse to our simple floppy robin project and that will be inside inside your cocos2dx root you've got the projects folder and inside the projects folder you can then 
navigate to simple floppy robin i've got project android and once i've selected that i just click open leave things as they were and this will import as well and what's actually happening now is if we look down in the console here you can see that things are building away and the building itself is actually going to take a little bit of time so I'll probably cut this out because the first time it builds the Cocoa Studio X libraries it takes some time but I'll sit here and wait and then we can look at actually running the application on the uh, on the device okay so the compile is finished we've got make leaving directory everything seemed to work okay you can see that our project simple floppy robin is here our classes are listed in here and now what I want to do is actually um, export an APK here that we're then going to via the terminal install on the device and that's just the way I do things I don't run them um, in a um, a virtual device or anything like that and the reason is is once you start using testing the game services or in-app purchases or something like that you need a signed a what's called a signed APK on your device otherwise it's not going to work so I've got in the habit of doing it uh, this way which I find better anyway to be honest so if you right click on simple floppy robin and you've got Android, to Android tools here and you've got the option to export signed or unsigned application package <coughs> excuse me the signed application package what this is is you create something called a key store which we'll do shortly and you put basically a name and a password in and the 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 name that you give for your key the application is signed then with that key which is just I imagine just some kind of long um, encryption key or key for the application and then you upload the APK to Google Play Store with signed with that key and the point is if any apps are installed on devices that don't have that key then they're not going to work so we're going to go export signed application package and even if you're thinking well I'm never going to use Google Play I'm never going to bother with this I just want to see the thing installed it doesn't matter it's still going to work anyway this way so export signed application package select the project it's already selected for us now we're going to say create a new key store and you can store this key store any way you like um, so I'm just going to put this key store in the root folder the tutorial Eclipse on my desktop and I'll just call it s simple floppy SFR uh, I'll call it because I'm not going to use it apart from this tutorial and then you need to give it a password and confirm the password and now you need to um, uh, offer uh, a name for it and then again a password for this uh, alias again and then how long you want this to be valid so the sorry this key so you, <clears throat> I got a bit mixed up amongst myself there this one was creating the key store with its password and this is now cr um, creating the key so I'll call it simple floppy key and you give in a password for the key and confirm and put the validity in there as well we'll say 100 years I can't remember exactly what they recommend but 100 is definitely okay what they don't recommend is putting five years or something like this and you need at least um, the first and last name here the rest you can leave blank once you've done that the store will be created and now you need to specify where you want your destination APK file to go. So simple robin, floppy robin dot APK inside here. And then you just click finished and this will now generate the APK. In a few seconds hopefully, otherwise I'll have to do another pause and cut, but usually it's very quick. Okay, that's done. If I then go inside our tutorial eclipse on the uh, desktop here, and just close everything off you can see that we have our APK so what we'll do now then is install that on Android device now I've got a Google uh, Nexus sitting in front of me I've got a few Android devices that's one of them I've already in the terminal gone to the Eclipse directory where the APK is and now what you need to type is ADB install 
space dash r space simple floppy robin dot apk. The dash r says to remove any previous versions of the app, otherwise they won't install. Now we haven't got a previous one at the moment, but I just put that anyway out of habit. And we then hit enter. <laughs> of course it says uh, device not found, so I'm just going to pull out the USB and plug the USB back in again and then via Android file transfer has popped up so I'll just put ADB and uh, d devices there it is so I'll just try the install again okay and that which it should do after a few seconds is tell us the rate that it's been transferring the app that everything's going in and then the app should be on the device so what I'm going to do now is turn on the camera and then hopefully this will appear on the video so somewhere inside the apps here should be the inside the device here should be the application installed there it is simple floppy robin and i'm going to start the app and if you noticed a bit of a break or a change in the audio it's because i forgot to press record on this movie camera so just start the application then and it started upside down turn it the other way okay get rid of the cable if i can and I'd, I'd prefer to show the device, like I said, I don't like using an emulator, so here's the game anyway. Uh, scored zero, very good, because I'm looking through the camera. Go to settings, and everything is pretty much as you would expect. I'll just turn the volume off. Uh, the one thing I, I did get wrong actually in a previous video very quickly is the music volume is controllable by the hardware, it's the effects volume that aren't controllable by the hardware buttons. So sorry to do things a disservice there. Okay then, so that's the app then working on the Android screen. Everything looks and seems to be alright. Obviously it's going to need a bit of tweaking with the jump speed and the tubes and things like that. But it's, it's working okay. The only thing to mention really is the font, but remember we need to set the file directory correctly. So next video, on to implementing Android. So thanks so much for watching and comments, questions, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.